All right, hello everybody. It's Brian Lowe with DAV again. Uh, this is part two of well, a two-part interview series between myself and Doug Wells, DAV's National Membership Director. If you did not watch part one, please do. There's some valuable information in there about the Recruit a Warrior program and where you can go and how to get your personalized links so you can collect all those recruiting points and you reach out to uh, veterans that you know in your area to become DAV members as well as hot list and how those can help you guys recruit new members during such an interesting time on the ground. But here in part two, we want to talk about um, the importance of that recruiting. As those of you who may not know, DAV is celebrating our centennial anniversary at Century of Service to Veterans. And as exciting as that is, you can't help but to think about the future, and that's where recruiting becomes very important. We're also going to start with Doug and ask him a little bit about chapter operations during this pandemic. How are they holding meetings? How are they conducting business, Doug? And what does it look like on the ground for them? So, uh, as we know, um, not all states are created equal with respect to the, to the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think you mentioned we want everyone to follow the guidance of the CDC and their state and local authorities um, and, you know, meet when it's safe uh, to do so. When you do meet, uh, ensure that uh, you are, are following, you know, those best practices that are, are, uh, are, being, um, are being recommended. Um, disabled veterans as a population are uh, more susceptible um, to, uh, you know, the coronavirus, COVID-19, uh, than our uh, civilian population counterparts because of uh, all the, the comorbidity issues with respect to service-related conditions. Yeah. Um, plus, our population in DAV tends to be a little bit older, and, and that's really who this things after it's a horrible situation so uh, we want to make sure that people understand the safety of our members is of paramount concern to DAV um, we are better with them in the fight than not so uh, we want them to exp exp uh, exercise the you know vast amounts of caution um, you know from our all the way from our department and chapter leaders all the way down to uh, <clears throat> you know individual chapter members so, you know, we encourage them when they can volunteer to look for creative ways to volunteer, uh, to, to meet and organize and do all the things uh, that EAV is famous for doing uh, because, you know, the, the more than one million members of the DAV and its auxiliary need us out there in the fight. Uh, we've got to do it safely. We've got to make sure it's appropriate uh, to the area that we're, we're in. And, um, you know, just understand that uh, there's nothing that's worth uh, risking your health unnecessarily. So, uh, you know, as far as chapter operations are concerned, we've uh, fielded a number of calls, uh, you know, when should we be meeting or they're meeting and they shouldn't be, that sort of thing. Again, there can't be a cookie cutter approach to this. Uh, there's no one size fits all because of the ever changing nature of it, you know, to start. Uh, but also because, you know, some areas have been hit harder than other areas. Um, so we just want to ensure that, that folks are taking care of business as safely as possible, um, you know, ensuring that they're paying attention to the facts on the ground in their area. Um, we understand that it may, you know, take longer for some chapters to actually hold a formal meeting and to be able to have elections um, you know, uh, to fill positions for the upcoming year. Uh, we understand that reports might take a little longer to get to us than typical, um, and that's okay. We're not going to beat you up about that. Uh, we don't want people sending in rehashed reports or things of that nature. When you can safely meet and hold elections, do so, and then just send us the report at that point. Uh, we, we don't want people risking themselves, again, unnecessarily because they think, that uh, we're holding folks to our typical deadlines, um, you know, and, and it, it just makes it even more difficult and heartbreaking because of the, the being in the centennial year, this was supposed to be a time of celebration, but, uh, you know, and it still can be. Uh, we're still looking forward to a lot of great stuff moving forward, but uh, we want to make sure that we're taking care of business and addressing things properly. So once folks can safely meet, hold elections, do so, and then give us the reports in at that time, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, make sure things are entered properly. Uh, the other thing I did want to note about that is to remind folks that they can't be holding elections via, uh, you know, phone or email or video conference or anything like that. 
elections still have to be held in person. Um, you know, we have unfortunately had a couple of uh, uh, instances where that's occurred and uh, we've had to go back and address that. And that's fine. It was the, no nefarious intent there. It was just people didn't understand uh, the requirements there. So uh, you can't have, you know, those types of elections electronically. Uh, they got to be held in person. So uh, again, take your time, do it safely, do it smartly. And if anybody has any questions, they can reach out to me at uh, National Headquarters. I'd be happy to respond. Now, Doug, thanks for that. And just to stress one more time, for anybody watching, uh, DAV member or not, please be as safe as you can. Um, rule one, uh, if you're in combat, for example, you need to stay alive. Uh, you're no good to anybody if you can't be active or participant or carrying on the fight, as Doug mentioned. Um, now, to transition just briefly here to the importance of recruiting, um, it's obviously a difficult time to do that effectively, which is why I encourage everybody, again, to watch part one, um, especially the recruit warrior aspect. Um, but also the hot list as well. And, you know, a member is a member, um, a lead is a lead, a prospect is a prospect. But what would be your best advice, I guess, Doug, to DAV recruiters out there in this current situation on how to stay in the fight and stay motivated? I know you guys have done a lot in the membership department and making it more uh, user-friendly, more digital, more remote uh, access. What would be some of your quick advice for them while we have some time? So, again, um, there's, there's lots of things that folks can do. I know – my counterpart in uh, volunteer services uh, through the LVAP program uh, is exploring a lot of different ways that people can, uh, can volunteer. Um, so, you know, I, I would just ask folks, uh, especially our members that are used to volunteering, uh, continue to be vigilant to continue to work with their hospital service coordinators and their van transportation network coordinators, um, you know, to look for those opportunities to volunteer and serve, uh, in safe ways, you know, again, uh, different programs are coming back online every single day. Uh, but I want to make sure that people are doing it safely, whether it's volunteering, uh, meeting, recruiting, whatever it is. Uh, but, you know, again, just going back to our previous conversation, uh, all of DAV's um, recruitment uh, uh, platforms are mobile friendly now. So even if you just pull up on your smartphone and go to DAV.org, and click the, the join button. Uh, that's all mobile friendly. Um, so, but, but do it virtually, you know, and, and while uh, we can't hold elections, um, you know, virtually or, you know, via electronic, we have seen a lot of chapters in the past few months during these unusual times um, utilize, you know, video conferencing in very effective ways to continue to, to reach out to their members, to be there, uh, for that shoulder to lean on uh, when people are through tough times. Uh, a lot of our members can become very isolated uh, during this time. So we wanna make sure that we're reaching out, taking care of each other. And you know that, that's the perfect way uh, to extend camaraderie and be good members and, and volunteer. If, if someone just needs to have a conversation, uh, we've got more ways uh, to, to reach out and, and, and talk with each other today than we ever have in the history of man. So. Um, Please, you know, get comfortable with the technology, uh, and this is a great time to do it. No, Doug, I totally agree. Um, I appreciate your time. I think I've taken enough of it. But if you're watching, one, well, thanks for watching. I encourage you again to go back and watch part one as this is part two. Uh, please take some of Doug's advice. Check out those websites. Uh, lean on the nurses department if you have any questions. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for everything that you guys do. Uh, stay safe. Stay in the fight. And, Doug, thank you very much. Thank you. Take care, everybody.